Okay, so I just plugged it in and this is it. Welcome back to another episode of We Rebuilds. Today, we're going to do some work on this M240i again. What happened from the, in the thumbnail, as you can see, a coolant leak. Finally, I have an issue with this B58 engine. So, anyways, and, and the sponsor of this video today is Ansel once more, because today I have a BM700. So, this one is specifically for BMWs. So, you know, while working on the BMW, I can also test this out and give you live reviews of what's going on. So, anyways, like, share, subscribe, drop your comments and thoughts down below, turn your post notifications on, check us out on all social media links, and don't forget to grab your social merch from WeRebuilds.com. Hey, well, as you can see, I'm not re really want to, let's just hop straight into the video and get started. So, the, so the other day, I had a um, low um, coolant light the other day. So I was wondering what was going on. Turns out when I was checking everything, anyways, I ended up starting the car, realized that I had water or coolant running from right here. So I ended up pulling out this screw and then when I turned it back, put it back in, I ended up snapping it. So then I realized that the screw was bad. So as you, many people know on these B58s, the only thing that you will hear about is sometimes it will get cool and leak because after a while you have to change these tops. So what I end up doing is just buying two new ones from BMW. As, a, as you can see, we have them in the packages back there. So what we're gonna do right now is maybe jack up the car. After jacking up the car, we're gonna start pulling all these hoses off. It shouldn't take long, probably just take 30 minutes maybe a little bit of spit, um, spillage, and then just keep going. So let's look at the packages right now. So in these boxes, I end up um, getting some parts, as I said earlier. So I end up getting the, the two coolant bottles. I was just gonna get one, but um, FCP, Euro, FCP Euro had them, but I realized it was um, a little bit cheaper on the BMW website and plus I wanted to get an OEM one. So if the OEM one is cheaper, then that's the one that I'm, that I'm, I'm getting. So this is one of the caps. So well, basically both of them. And then this other one. And then here we have the bottle. Hopefully it came with everything. brand new bottle and everything so as I was saying this was the piece that broke off so because this piece broke off you know this what this caused the, the big issue so because this piece broke off this was the one that caused um, the big issue of the looking so instead of just getting a instead of just I was trying to see if I could get this, but I ended up just replacing the whole bottle so I wouldn't have to worry about cooling leaks for a long time. So that's the big bottle. And here should be the small bottle. So here is it. As I said, I didn't really need this, but I was like, why just change one and not change the other? So now I have this. So next, we have this box from FCP Euro. I did get some parts from them, but one of the two, I just got two things. Coolant and otherwise from coolant, I end up getting a pan so I can put the coolant in. They gave me a lot of paper. So this is the thing that I'm gonna to use to put the coolant in. It's a big thing and 
BMW cooling. So this is the only thing that I needed from MCP Euro. As you know, they're already lifetime warranty. So let me not waste any more time. Let's just hop straight into this video because if I don't get this car ready, I won't be able to drive it and go to work. So let's go. So all I'm gonna do is just have this under the car because as you know so I end up putting this green pan under here so they just catch some of the coolant so all you just gotta do is just get a flat head pull this up and you should be able to pull it out I still have pressure in these hoses but um, I've already done uh, this one so I'm about to just work up, work my way around with the rest and then there should be one under the bottom. So the one under the bottom, that's what I'm worried about. Because that's what that's the one that's gonna really release cooling everywhere. But I mean that's about it. Switch these parts and then put these new parts in, and load it up with coolant, get it started, and then guess what? You could test out this in the OBD2 scanner from Ansel and see how good it works. Don't mind my BMW emblem missing. I still have it on that carbon fiber piece up top right here. I end up ordering the one for the 340i by mistake. Hey, we we those like, share, subscribe. So I end up putting back these, the top on. And then now it's just a fight. The one that's all the way down there. So as you can see right here, what I'm doing in the video, I am taking out the the reservoir so now you can see I pulled it up that the last hose that I pulled out all the coolant is all running to the floor it's a good thing that we have that green bucket under there so now I'll just remove the sensor so now that's out and both of them um, are out together my son is right there keeping my company playing so now when we look back at the car you can see that everything down there and that's the hose that I was talking about that's kind of difficult to get to um, when you're removing everything and, and that's the other hose that hooks up to the bottom right there. So those two, are, two hoses are re relatively difficult to get to because it's just way down there. But um, once you get it out, it's, everything is just going smooth sailing from there. So that's the plus side um, to get it done. Now I'm just checking right here to make sure that that hose was not um, bent or burst or anything so that's good right there so now we're going to try to basically put the hose well not the hose but put the reservoir bottle back in because now that we got it out it's just going to be a quick remove and replace so now i'm just here explaining all of this stuff like what i'm saying right now because i lost most of the audio and i just realized that i lost the audio but um, yeah that's what's going on so now right here you can see I have the brand new reservoir bottle right and then there's the overfill bottle on top of the, the, the engine cover so um, both of them it says a little clip that is used to basically lock both into place and then you could just have a, a small thin screwdriver to go in between to get it so now you could see I'm just cleaning off the connectors to just make sure that hey not it's not getting corroded or anything and that it's just easier to just make sure everything is good so I don't have to redo this process again 
because you know doing the wrong thing but as you can see um, the clip has been clipped in uh, now I'm just kind of like looking and thinking how to see which way to put the holes on so now the holes the bottom holes is going on because you know once that hose is on and it's locked into place I'm not thinking about moving that again so as you can see right there I'm struggling to, to get it in and then uh, once that hose is back in then now you can see everything is coming together real smooth so once I clip it in with the hose then that's at least so we could start like filling this car up back with some coolant and get it on the way so let's keep moving So that means it went all the way in. So now I'm just gonna lock it to the pin. So now the, it's locked in with the pin. I'm gonna tug on it. And see that it's not going nowhere. So all I'm gonna do next you just slide it on to the bigger bottle and then leave it right there. So, boom, slide onto that. See, it's not going nowhere. Now I do, you just put everything back right in its original place. That's it. So, that's on. I'm gonna see. So now, if you look closely, hope y'all could see it. But now it's the this piece is not touching anymore on that on the AC line. So that's good. So all I just needed to do was just it was just basically me um, that turned it. So now that's done. Next thing that I am about to do is start filling it up with coolant. But of course, before we do that, still gotta connect the rest of the lines. Remember, line them up with the groove. Tug on it, make sure it's not going anywhere. This one feel like it didn't go in all the way. Okay, it's locked in. That's locked in. So what I like to do is just check everything because what I'd hate to do is start the car and then when I start the car, then coolant's everywhere again. So, I like to make sure everything is good. Okay, so we have everything good. Now, just put the last hose in. And then this should be it tug on it it's not going nowhere all right so all I'm gonna do now is just loosen this right here it will be bad luck if this broke on me a second time anyways oh I almost dropped it so now this is off well not all the way off but I'm gonna just put it back in now I'm about to just pour the coolant in and then see what happens next. Now that I just put coolant in it, now I'm about to start it. 
let it run for a while and then I'm gonna close these up and then just open the, the bleeder um, screw and then have it bleed out the air and then we should be good and then that's when now we're gonna get that uh, BM 700 and then we're gonna see all the cool stuff it could do Top it up, add more coolant, and then go from there. Now we don't have the coolant um, low coolant so we should be good uh, I'm just gonna have it run for a while and then next episode we will probably change the transmission fluid I know I've been saying that so next episode I I'm definitely gonna do that hey but for now so for now let's check out that BM 700 from Ansel so let's look at it, see all the stuff that it could do. I'm gonna plug it up to the car, see what a, what kind of th stuff it will be telling me to see if, let me know, like, say, hypothetically, they could just tell me what's the cooling temperature and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go grab it and I will just give it a, a real breakdown. Okay, so I just plugged it in and this is it. What BMW. So basic functions. So these are all the stuff that it's telling me what's going on. So we have one engine module thing. So let's see every, all the stuff that it's gonna break down for us and let us know what we should start looking into. So what we have here, so we got two for car access system. So let's see what's that. Read fault codes, AHL system faulty, headlight driver module left. Hmm. So remember, remember how we, we changed that? Well, we didn't change that module. So maybe that module is basically going out, but it's a good thing that I haven't got rid of the other ones. So, see. So I mean, this is basically telling me everything that's wrong with the, with the, with the 240 right now. Let's see what this is. Let's read that far code. The froster flat motor high. Air disruption, flat motor. Okay. So, Probably need to get a, a a new a new um, flat motor for that, or find out what's going on with that central gateway module. So this is all this stuff that, that that's wrong with the 240 or the codes that are on the 240 right now. So I'm gonna say seat module. Let's see what the seat module. So driver motor backrest angle adjustment short to ground or low side or open circuit okay i mean that's not bad i'm not really too worried about that so i mean as you can see it's pretty good 
Uh, I like it. Let me escape out of this. Exit. See what else, what else we could find with this. So we got the oil reset. Uh, B BMS reset. We got the EC ETC reset. So we got the reset for what looks like for the brake EBT reset. We got the battery. Let's see what's going on with the battery. So please turn off car engine. But as you can see, um, it's at 100, and f um, not 100, it's at 14.6566 jumping. So OBD2, let's see what is this. except for those all those um codes on the other side so we just got delivery of our new build you wouldn't want to know what it is